Over the last few weeks videos, which you can find in my channel, I produced a prototype cycloidal drive reducer and also a strain weave or harmonic drive reducer. I previously only tested these with a sensorless skateboard ESC which made the motor turn, but it only uses the back EMF from the coils to work out what the motor position is. This makes it hard to apply holding power to the motor, and if the motor stalls then torque drops significantly. My version 2 cycloidal drive reducer uses two cycloidal discs offset 180 degrees from each other. This reduces vibrations and also helps convey torque more efficiently. I did some tests with the skateboard ESC, just lifting some mass at 100mm from the centre of rotation, which was relatively successful, but it doesn't realise the motor's full potential due to the use of the skateboard ESC. The cycloidal drive is all printed in PLA. It is a 10 to 1 reduction, which means that it can be back driven. This is required to give dynamic robots, such as my OpenDog version 2, some natural spring in their legs. My harmonic drive reducer uses a flexible spline, 3D printed in TPU, but the rest is also standard PLA. I found that, in my version at least, this was less efficient than the cycloidal drive. It's still a 10 to 1 reduction, so we can compare with the cycloidal drive, but I could stop the output of this reducer with my hands, at least when using the skateboard ESC. It is also not back drivable, which limits its use in dynamic robots. This time we're going to do some better tests and compare the two reducers. We really need to use a motor driver that's aware of the motor's position so we can apply power to it effectively. So this time I'm using an O-Drive 3.6 with a 6-cell LiPo. The O-Drive uses an encoder on the back of the motor so it can be calibrated and knows what the motor's position is. This means it can energise the motor's coils at the right time. The O-Drive will allow both position and velocity control of the motor, and I've used these in many robots before, including OpenDog version 2 and the really useful robot. Let's test the harmonic drive first, so I've screwed that to a piece of wood and clamped it to the table. We're using the O-Drive and the encoder to control it, so it should have more torque than the skateboard ESC. But it appears I can still stop that with my hands if I'm very careful, which isn't right at all. Even OpenDog version 2 with 5 to 1 belt reductions is more powerful than that. I really couldn't hold back the dog's leg with one finger as I'm doing here with the screwdriver even though I've got a lever. So that doesn't seem right at all. So that's not right, I shouldn't be able to stop that with one finger when it's a 10 to 1 reduction and we've got the same parameters as the open dog motors which are only a 5 to 1 belt reduction and the whole thing stands up and walks along. So there's probably something wrong with the efficiency of my design there, some way the teeth mesh or just flexing that flex spline or something's causing too much friction. So I was much happier with the cycloidal drive version 2 when I made it, so that's the one we're going to test next. The cycloidal drive was much smoother moving and also back drivable, which means we can use it in dynamic robots. Again, I put the encoder on the back so we can use the O-Drive to drive the motor properly. So we've got a very similar setup. I've already attached a lever to this one because I know it was already more powerful with the skateboard ESC. And yep, there's no chance of me stopping that with one finger. So that just seems much more powerful altogether. The other one was really easy to stop for some reason, but this has a lot more torque in it. And it's still 10 to 1, and still of course all 3D printed in standard PLA. And if we try and hold position with the O-Drive in the encoder, then we get a virtual spring back driving that whole gearbox and back driving the motor with the motor driver trying to hold the position in place. We can see that's actually back driving the whole drivetrain. If you see where my finger is, you can see the motor moving as I move the output shaft. So that works really well. For some proper torque tests, we're going to hang some mass at 250mm from the centre of rotation, which is more than double from the previous video. To start with, I'm using an 8kg kettlebell, which we previously did at 100mm. So not too many problems there, but let's move up to 16. So it won't lift it, but we want to find out what the stall torque is. Of course, I can't lift 16kg with one finger, so I think we found almost the sweet spot, either here or slightly less. An 8 kilogram mass hanging on a string, if you want to lift it up, that requires 78 newtons of force in the Earth's gravitational pull. So a quarter of a metre, that's going to be 19.5 newton metres of torque, which is what we easily get from this gearbox. Obviously with 16 kilograms, it's going to be nearer 30, 
So we're probably somewhere in the middle there realistically for stall torque around 25 to 30 newton meters. So 20 newton meters is 198.8 kilogram centimeters if you want to compare with hobby servos. And obviously this is an 850 watt brushless motor though. So we would get a lot more torque, but we've only got a 10 to one reduction. So with a higher gear reduction, we could get a lot more torque, but we really need that 10 to one so we can back drive it and we can make a springy dog leg, which is the entire purpose of developing this. So we now need to do some more comparisons with an actual dog leg. And I did these tests with the five to one belt reduction when I started developing Open Dog version two. And now we're gonna do the same test again with this. With the previous test leg, when I started Open Dog version two, we used two five to one belt reductions and made a test leg set at 45 degrees. The most I could push down on scales was around nine kilograms, and you can see the motor's back driving and the leg is bending quite a lot, so this isn't the maximum that the dog could support. In a normal standing position though, we can apply more force to the scale with less torque on each of the joints. Doing this test, I was able to push just about 12 kilograms down onto the scales, and you can still see that the joints are back driving. So we're gonna do the tests with the cycloidal drive, and so I've made a virtual leg, which is 250 millimeters from the end of the wood and 250 millimeters to the foot. And this is the same as the Open Dog version two dimensions. And I'm setting that leg at 45 degrees to start with. We're using the O-Drive to hold the position again, and at 45 degrees, I can push 17 and nearly 18 kilograms down on those scales. With the leg much straighter, it's much, much more, around 25 kilograms of force that I can push downwards on those scales. So pretty much double the previous tests. So that seems pretty good. We could reduce mass from this gearbox, as I said, when I developed it by taking all of those bearings out and putting in bushings as well. So we could reduce the mass here, so we wouldn't be doubling the mass of the robot dog, but we would be doubling the, the force and the torque that the joints could withstand. So I don't think there's any issue with this really. It'd probably make a more powerful dog that's less wobbly and that can walk much better. But we do need to make sure that the dog can jump on the ground a lot without smashing the gearboxes to pieces. And that's why belts are good, because the worst is the belt skips and nothing bad happens and the pulleys can easily be 3D printed in PLA. So we do need to do some more resilience tests for this to check it's actually gonna last before I make 12 of them and try and make another robot dog. I went quite some distance like that, but the footage of one wheel going around isn't very interesting, but it does seem still to be running okay, so let's open it up and have a look at the drive. So yes, that wheel was a bit wobbly, but that's down to the moulding of the wheel, everything else is running true on the hub that I put on to attach that to the reducer. So let's open up the gearbox, 
and everything still seems to be running absolutely fine and there's no sign of any damage or any melting. And bear in mind everything is still made of PLA in this model. Let's take out that top disc and have a look at the other one. And everything seems to be perfectly intact, so I'm pretty happy with the way this was designed and I think those bearings have helped a lot. I'm pretty happy with the robustness and the torque that we get out of this design and it is just 3D printed in PLA, so thanks to 3D Fuel for the PLA for this project, the orange is 3D Fuel Industrial PLA and the yellow and the other colours is just 3D Fuel Standard PLA. And obviously we can upgrade to PETG or some other material or 3D printed nylon or laser cut something or CNC aluminium for those discs or anything else if we need to make it stronger in the future but 3D printing makes it really accessible and I'm going to publish this design as always as open source and you can find that link in the description to this video to GitHub. So there are several improvements we need to make to this design though several of you have pointed out the cycloidal discs aren't the right shape and that's because I just approximated them by putting lots of cylinders in a circular pattern kind of rounding off the edges. Check out this video by Levi Jansen who actually explains how to do it properly and I'll be referring back to that video in future versions when I make another more refined version. Obviously this is full of bearings that makes it quite heavy and also makes it quite costly so I plan to replace those bearings around the outside with just bushings probably on shoulder bolts and that will probably reduce lots of the weight and if we use nylon or some material like the spacers I put in here just get lots of those and use those as bushings that will remove quite a lot of mass as well. So as I say this is open source and if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership then those links are in the description below and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up to be part of that discussion. Alright that's all for now.